Hello, my name is Nasa Kingo. This is Tanzania News. Great pleasure today uh, to get a chance to talk about a very rare form of diplomacy, sports diplomacy. And uh, to break it down for us today, we've got uh, a great honor to be with the U.S. Embassy spokesperson, who is also the public affairs officer here in the, in the U.S. Embassy. He's here in the studio. He's going to talk to us all about sports diplomacy. Mr. James Rodriguez, uh, welcome to Tanzania News. Ah, well, well, thank you for having me. It's a great pleasure to be able to speak to you, Nasser, and also to the audience and kind of explain some of the more fun activities from the U.S. Embassy, our sports diplomacy programs. Definitely very fun, actually. And um, I think it's, um, I know you've been doing this for quite some time, but there are so many viewers out there uh, who would like to know a little bit more about sports diplomacy. Maybe uh, to start off, would you like to explain to us how does sports diplomacy work, especially at this time, 21st century? Wonderful, yes. Well, uh, well, first, we'll talk about kind of sports in general. You know, sports in the United States is a part of our culture and a very important part of American culture. We love sports and certain uh, regions are associated with particular sports. So if you go, for example, to the north, of the United States, you'll see a lot of hockey. You go down into Texas, it's all about football. And you know, you go to New York, Washington DC, where I'm from, is super famous for producing basketball players. Fantastic. Um, so what we want to do is kind of share our passion for sports with the rest of the world. And you know, with sports, what a lot of uh, people don't fully realize is the sports builds good characteristics in people. Sports teaches you how to win graciously, how to lose sometimes, how to, f how to be a leader, how to follow, how to work uh, with a team, just all these little life skills that sports can, can show the individual. So our idea with the, at the US government, at the embassy, was to use sports as this good thing to show to the people. So sports diplomacy, going back to sports diplomacy. So we, we have three essentially separate programs. The, the first one is the Sports Envoy program. And that's when we bring uh, an athlete from the United States to different countries so they can get a tour of the country and work with athletes in said country. For example, um, in Tanzania, we had um, Alex Morgan, the famous uh, soccer player, probably the most famous U.S. women's soccer player ever. She came to Tanzania with her husband, who was also a professional uh, soccer so, player. Yes, and they ran clinics, worked, worked with kids, worked with coaches, uh, and that was the idea behind the Sports Envoy. We share our passion and knowledge of certain sports with the local community. Um, we also have programs where we invite uh, Tanzanians to go to the United States. Fantastic. So yeah, and, and those are really, really popular because what we try to do is send, uh, for example, we sent, uh, if I'm not mistaken, it was the under 17 women's basketball team and the coach to the United States to kind of meet with our officials, our coaching community, and kind of learn best practices and share because it is a two-way exchange after all. And I'm certain that there are things done in Tanzania that we could learn from in the United States. Um, so th those are kind of the two branches. We also have a sports mentorship program where we select a person to go to the United States. This is much rare, but it's about the business of sports, you know, like Mark. Yeah, exactly. You know, the marketing aspect, the advertising, the running a team. So these uh, individuals will actually go work on a team and learn from kind of the administration of the team. Um, and so going back to your question uh, in the 21st century, what's uh, how do we do sports diplomacy? Well, I, I personally feel that it's all about social media. That's what's really changed everything. Before, when, when I was young, or, you know, I, I, I won't date you, but I know when I was young, yes. prior to social media, yes. um, we, the, the athlete was over here, and there's some big figure, the, the, the athlete. And you know they were very distant from the uh, spectator, from the fan. But now with social media, you know exactly what the athlete's been up to all day. They post it themselves on Instagram. Like, I had this for breakfast, and I ran to practice, and this was my lunch. And you really get uh, 
close connection in some cases with athletes. Sadly, just last week in, in the United States, one of the uh, quarterbacks of my favorite football team, the Washington Commanders, as they're called now, was uh, lamentably killed in an accident in Florida. Yeah, very sad news, yes. Yes, yes. So, you know, we felt that as fans because we watched this young man play for our team for a couple of years, and now he's sadly just gone. So th this is the type of connection that I think that has changed in maybe the past 15 years, this bond with the athlete. We know more about them. We, we see them more, and we see them more as individuals, as human beings, and kind of interact with them in their day-to-day -day lives. Speaking about the United States of America uh, loving sports, uh, good news first, congratulations. We have qualified for the FIFA World Cup 2020. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just barely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, but you're in there. We are. Italy could make it, so congratulations to you. What are your hopes for, for, for the American soccer team, national soccer team? Well, I have been a big fan of the U.S. national men's soccer team since I was very, very small. Um, before they ever made a World Cup, the, the first World Cup they made was in 1990. Um, but before that, they were trying to make the World Cup, and they even created a team called Team America that used to play in the North American Soccer League. It was the national team playing the other teams in the league. Um, it was funny to watch and kind of futile because they didn't make the, the, the World Cup until 1990. So, you know, we've seen them go up and down, kind of have these peaks. I think we were really good at the 2002. Wait, the uh, yes, the uh, Japan-Korea World Cup. We had a great run into the quarterfinals. And then it kind of started to fall apart on us, and we missed the last World Cup, mm -hmm. which was... Not I was sure. in Trinidad yeah. the night they were eliminated. I watched that game, watched them lose um, in person. It was terrible, my dad and I. Mm -hmm. But um, now I'm excited. Um, I think many people are talking about a golden generation of American soccer players. We have quite a few. We have players like Pulisic on Chelsea. We have uh, Gio Reyna on Dortmund. We have... Um, Wea, Tim Wea on Lille. So we have some good quality players playing in some of the top leagues in Europe. And this is exactly what you want to see in development. So for this one, I, I, for this World Cup, I hope they get out of the uh, first round, play well against their first opponent, and I'll be happy with that. But next World Cup, you know, is in the United States. Yes. United States, Mexico, and Canada. So we won't have to qualify, mercifully. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, that's the one that I really hope that we do well. We're going to, we will be at home and we will have this team that right now, you know, Pulisic is early 20s. He'll be in his late 20s then. And I think that's the prime of this team's kind of professional career. So, um, you know, some, a little bit of success this, this World Cup and maybe a lot in the next one. That's the one I hope we win. <laughs> Based on the what's on the results of the most of the qualifying games, uh, as far as football is concerned at the moment, I think a lot of things have changed. Even African football has improved a lot. Oh yes. And um, yeah, let's uh, just see how it's it, 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 it would go. Africans, we do have a lot of hopes for Senegal. Mm, yeah, absolutely. They've played it very well so far. So uh, all the best to you as well. Good players on that team, <laughs> by the way. I'm I'm I love watching Senegal. I watched the uh, World Cup qualifier that Senegal got in against. Uh, Ni no, no, it was against Egypt, right? Egypt. Yes, and the then most, they beat the Egypt in one, yes, yeah. and then they yeah. beat Egypt in the finals of the uh, African Cup. Uh, those are fun games to watch, and I will let it be known that my favorite club team. I do not have one in the EPL. I love uh, Napoli of Italy. Oh, Napoli. I lived there for three years, so oh, I became a big, big uh, tifoso, as we oh, say in yeah. Italian. Yeah. Um, and I love Koulibaly. What a great center back. Yeah. What? Very composed. Very composed, Very composed, big, strong, just like what a player. Yeah. Now let's go back to sports diplomacy. Um, I think the, the biggest question that everybody is watching the program at the moment is asking himself or herself if uh, he or she is, uh, is an athlete in Tanzania is how do they get a chance to, uh, to go to the United States? You know, if, if of course, that's, I think you're going to answer that one later on. Uh, let's just get to know about uh, why sports diplomacy is one of the f forms of diplomacy that is least spoken of while we understand how strong um, <laughs> football or soccer or any kind of sports um, uh, is around the world. I, I, even when you want to make easy money around the world, you get into sports. I mean, how, why is, is, is not really 
uh, spoken much or it's right, a problem right. with us with the media or what's, what's, well, what's it all about well that's the thing you know I and, and I think the best way to explain is um, through a, a quick little story if you'll allow me we had uh, Mike po Potea he was he is the athletic director at a high school at a secondary school in Orlando, Florida. And he was here a few months ago and he was running a couple tournaments because he wanted to see if Tanzania it was his first time in Tanzania had quality soccer players that he could take to Orlando. The good news is he found three. He found three Tanzanians that he will send to the United States that will study high school in Orlando, Florida. And when you play at a, this school in particular, it's known for a, athletics, mm -hmm. the graduates usually end up playing at the university level. So I think this is where it comes in. This is kind of the answer to your question. These kids, assuming that they do well academically, they get into a university, are going to play at the university level, whether it's soccer, basketball, what have you. But very few of those kids are really going to make it professionally. And I'm just talking about, not, not Tanzanian kids, but in general, what percentage of people can really earn a living playing this sport? Um, and that's very a small percentage. So I think the difficulty with sports diplomacy is very often there's very few people that can afford the time off to travel. You know, these being a soccer player, yeah, you have an off season. Absolutely. But now the top players, they don't go to the beach and, you know, drink pina coladas. They, they're training. They're watching video. They're getting better at their job, essentially, because being an athlete is their job. So um, for us, the difficulty is trying to find athletes that have the time to travel, you know, and uh, to, to different parts of the world. On occasion we do, and hopefully, you know, now that um, we've kind of reached this era where COVID is, we're a little bit past COVID, I hope that we can bring more, um, at least one athlete per year. Um, and I know that, for example, in Tanzania, what's growing by leaps and bounds is basketball. I think a lot of people would benefit from having a basketball, basketball player yes. come here and just kind of go out into some of the neighborhoods and run some clinics, play with some of the kids here, because I also did notice that there is a ton of basketball talent in Tanzania. A lot of them, yes. yes. Um, okay. So many sp sportsmen and, and women out there are watching right now, and I think let's go back to the main question. How do they get a chance to benefit from this sports diplomacy okay so you know I, I i hate to do it but i go back to kind of the statistics it's a small group of people that um well it's a small group of people that will go to the united states you know and we usually work through civil society organizations that use sports as a tool to better the lives of people you know like one one of the organizations that we recently worked with the first one that came to mind was shikandoto and this is an organization that has a program over at the Oyster Bay Secondary School. Mm -hmm. And what they do there is every Friday they get the girls out because the girls don't get to play sports. Mm -hmm. So they get them out there, they go for a run, and then they play soccer, do some drills, have a good time. And at the same time, they also talk to the girls about being good citizens, good hygiene, taking care of themselves, these sorts of things, good nutrition, these sorts of things that people don't really talk to the kids about. So... These are the type of organizations that we work through. We also work through the soccer, the federations, and, and the Ministry of Sports and Culture. So we usually work through them. But having said that, that's kind of like if you're a Tanzanian and you want to go to the United States. Those are the organizations that we tend to associate with. It's a very small number. But we do really want to work with people, the ordinary people. So we will have people come from the United States, like Alex Morgan. She'll run a clinic. But we also stress to work with coaches because those are the people that multiply what we do. So maybe directly, you know, a, a person like Alan, Alex Morgan gets to work with 100, 200 people. But if you work with the coaches, each coach has like 30 people that follow his directions and learn from him. So that's who we try to work with, those coaches that will kind of expand the benefits of the sports diplomacy program. Okay, that's very interesting. Uh, speaking about the forms of sports that are um, uh, very famous in the United States of America, you get uh, hockey, you have baseball, you have American uh, football. Um, basketball? 
basketball as well. Uh -huh. But I wanted to pick these three because they're not as famous as the uh, United States here in Tanzania. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> what you as an embassy doing to, to impact the same spirit? Like, um, there could be some people in Tanzania that would like to play American football or would like to play hockey or, or baseball. Absolutely. Well, you know, uh, hockey might be tough in Tanzania until it starts to snow. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You know? yeah, it has to be snow, yeah. <laughs> Unless we make an artificial snow or something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, you know, most of the people, e even in the United States, most of the people that play hockey come from the northern colder states, kind of the Minnesota, you know, Michigan, um, that kind of the north where it's super, super cold. Um, you know, people from Florida, I, you know, they don't really play hockey. And, and so it's very regional in that nature. Mm -hmm. And it also has to do with the um, heritage. Because if, if you talk about a state like Minnesota, where it's very cold, many of the people that immigrated, you know, the United States is a country of immigrants, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So many of the people that immigrated to that region of the United States are from Sweden and Norway. So this oh, is some, you know, yeah. they, they brought this culture of hockey with them from there. Um, so, so uh, of course, it would be fun to, to see uh, some ice hockey in, in Tanzania, but I think it would be a, di a little bit difficult. And I think that's also the um, one of the issues with American football. It's the American football and baseball, to a lesser extent, requires so much equipment. You know, you need a bat, you need the helmet, you need the glove, you need the bases to run about around in baseball. Whereas that's what... To me, the beauty of soccer is just kind of this egalitarian support where all you need is a ball and people can use a shoe and a rock for the goals That's and it. you can play anywhere. And I've played in every country that I've lived in. I think this is my eighth country. I have played on concrete, on dirt, on grass, on basketball courts. You can play soccer anywhere. So that, I think, is, is an area that we can focus on as an embassy because there's already a hunger, a passion for soccer. But now, what, as an embassy, what we want to do is extend that into the female, the women's community, so that women become more active. And I know that, uh, you know, the national team of Tanzania, the women's team is pretty good. Pretty good, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so it's there, and we want to build upon that. Okay. Um, maybe let's get to um, you being here in Tanzania for quite some time. Uh, you have seen the, the sport spirit that Tanzanians do have. Uh, we have um, fantastic players and athletes as well. Oh, yeah. Um, how much has have we been able to uh, manage the whole sports industry? Uh, I don't know. I think there are a lot of things that we need to learn. What's your take when you compare the two countries? What do you think uh, can be done to improve the, the sports industry in Tanzania, especially in terms of management and business uh, aspect of it? Right, right. Um, I, it, it's difficult to say without being really directly involved in it. I mean, you, you can see the passion in, in the fan base there you know it's Simba or Yanga you don't really get to choose another team it's either green or red and that's it yeah you have to choose one I mean I know there's a few fans here of Azam awesome, yeah, and you, you know for example too, yeah yeah the uh Coastal Union and uh, you know I, I'm personally also a fan of prisons I think that's a great really? name <laughs> <laughs> I just imagined some prisoners <laughs> playing soccer very rough. <laughs> but, um, you know, it, 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 the passion is there. It, it, absolutely. And, and some of these teams, you attract some talent from all over the continent. It's not a league of Tanzanians. Mm -hmm. You have people from all over the African continent playing here. So I, I think that from that standpoint, Tanzania is good. They have a top flight league i think the next goal would be obviously hey let's focus on our national team let's get the national team into the next world cup mm -hmm. and you know it's expanding next year so i, I think it's going to go up to 48 teams not next year but the the 2026 yes, yeah. yeah it's going to be more and more and more teams invited so i think it's a great opportunity for tanzania to really put its mark and really live up to its potential i mean there is a passion for soccer here and i think more than think that uh, the the fan base can drive you know a, a stronger team a stronger national team um, and then from the other standpoint the the business aspect I, I think that you know programs like the mentorship program that we have benefit Tanzanians um, the Tanzanian sporting system I for example I would love to see uh, 
NBA Africa team here. And I understand that Dar es Salaam was one of the finalists uh, at the end to get one of the teams. Um, so I'm hoping if the league expands that Tanzania will be one of the next recipients of a team. I'd love to go, you know, to the convention center or somewhere and watch a basketball game in Tanzania. That'd be a lot of fun. Definitely. I think uh, uh, we still have hopes uh, to, in, and also a room to improve as well. Uh, just maybe lastly, uh, who's next from the United States? Do you have any plans of bringing any basketball player or somebody who's famous that will pretty much relate with Tanzanians here? Um, well, I think uh, we, we haven't we haven't made any formal plans yet, but I'd love input from uh, from the community. Uh, maybe we want to bring in a, a female soccer player, or maybe we want to bring a basketball, basketball player, player, a woman or a man. You know, I'd, I'd love to hear back what from from the community what you would like to see, who you would like to see here. Um, so we haven't. We're not firm in our plans yet, but my guess is it'll be either a professional basketball player or um, a, a female professional soccer player, or maybe even from the WNBA. Um, I know this summer, for example, and people in the United States do have their eye on, on um, Tanzania. For example, if I'm not mistaken, is his name Marcus Brogdon? Brogdon, he plays on the Bulls or the Bucks. He's one of those uh, teams up there. And he, he was here in Tanzania last summer. And he, his uh, family has a foundation that works in the area of getting water, clean, potable water to people. Mm -hmm. So he was here last year, and we had the opportunity to meet him and talk to him about his, uh, his philanthropic work, right? So he, he decided that he's going to come this year, he's going to institute his program, but he agreed, and hopefully we can do it, uh, to hold a couple basketball clinics in uh, Dar es Salaam. And he usually travels with one or two other professional basketball players that, wanna, that are helping his cause. So um, even if it's not a formal, formal um, sports diplomacy, we hope to do something this summer in July or so with him. And uh, then later in the year or early next year, we hope to have a formal sports diplomacy program where we can bring somebody, um, you know, a famous basketball player. Um, I know, for example, one of um, the more better known uh, sports ambassadors that we have is uh, Dikembe Mutombo. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah, Mount Mutombo. I, I met him once. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Quite tall. Very. <laughs> but that goes for every basketball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And everybody's kind of tall to me, so. <laughs> if if the, the viewers do have any feedback or in terms of the athletes that they will, they will love for you to, to bring to Tanzania, how do they contact you? Uh, I, I think, uh, you know, reach out via our social media. You social know, media yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, we're not going to, you know, uh, I, I, I doubt we're going to have the bandwidth to bring LeBron James. But, <laughs> Shaquille O'Neal. Uh, yeah, yeah, may, yeah, maybe one of his teammates, may, you know. and, and Mike you, Jordan. Uh, there you go. <laughs> but he was here on vacation a few, like yeah. a year ago. Um, but you know, if, if I may ask your, your 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 viewers, hey, choose someone from a Washington D.C. sports team. That's my hometown, so that's who I want to see. <laughs> All right, that's definitely really nice today. Well, we we got the chance to talk to the U.S. Embassy spokesperson, uh, breaking down to us uh, the issue of uh, sports diplomacy. It's a rare, very rare uh, form of diplomacy, but I'm quite sure. Uh, as we're ending this interview, you have got to understand fully how United States of America have been uh, building bilateral relations with Tanzania through sports and culture uh, as well. And they've given you a chance as well to give your views. Uh, whom would you like to see coming to Tanzania through their social media platforms? My name is Nasa King. I've been with James Rodriguez, the U.S. Embassy spokesperson, and also who is the public affairs officer thank you very much for watching thank you very much hey thank you very much for having me it was a real pleasure i love talking about sports and great to get in touch with your viewers thank you very much